Today on Logan Lee Adventures, now at the end of my time living in Buenos Aires, my boyfriend Yeroon flew over to visit me. Yay, no longer long distance relationship. So he spent a few days with me showing him around Buenos Aires through my favorite spots. And now we're going to explore Argentina together. My time living in Buenos Aires has come to an end. I had set out to live in Buenos Aires for a season and what an autumn it has been in Argentina's capital. I really hope I'll get to be back again sooner rather than later. I know I'll be back anyways since I made all these such dear friends in this corner of the world. During my time working remotely from Buenos Aires, I never really left the city. All right, so I went north of Caba for my polo lessons, but I spent the rest of my time hanging out with friends in Buenos Aires and getting to know every single corner of the capital. Y'all better have checked those other vlogs out where I explored the city's neighborhoods by neighborhoods because it was so fun. Now it's onwards and upwards to explore Argentina beyond the capital. We're flying to Jujuy, which is a region in the north, renting a car and doing a road trip. One of my friends, Valentina, is originally from Jujuy, so she recommended a load of cool local things that I'll be sharing with you on this adventure. Jujuy is a province of Argentina located in the extreme northwest of the country at the borders with Chile and Bolivia. It's known for its landscape as you can see and food with Jujuy's culinary traditions being a mix of indigenous and Spanish influences resulting in truly unique and flavorful cuisine which we'll get to try later but already upon touching down in this province it's so dramatically different from Caba. As we're trying through This is Parmamuka Artisanal Market. So the market runs literally every single day. It's a staple here in the town, equivalent to the town square because this is the biggest open area for this small town. But it's really cool because you can see like all these locally handmade goods here. Hopefully I'll be seeing some llamas in Hukui because of all these cute llama dolls everywhere. There's so many cool stuff here. I really want these fuzzy slippers. <laughs> My first impression of Purmamarca so far. It is such a cool town. It's so different from the rest. I guess from like Buenos Aires. I mean, I know this is my first trip outside of Buenos Aires and into Argentina. So I don't have much of a reference point to the rest of the country, but it is a really cool town. It's very different. It's very giving like Cacti, like look at that large cactus. Finally, I get to explore Argentina. That has kind of been like my bad habit when I moved to a new city. I just focus on that city because there's so much things to do, like on the weekends and everything. And I never get to the chance to like actually go 
out of the city and explore the country that I'm in. So now that I'm here, I'm really excited to actually see different parts of Argentina. I mean, this cannot get any more further away and different from Buenos Aires. The sun is coming out and is hitting this mountain range. So this mountain right here, right from the city, well, from the town of Bermamarca. Apologies if I am butchering the town's name. Uh -huh. But this is Cerro de los Siete Colores, which means Seven Color Mountains. So first the sun is rising here, and then it's gonna hit here. Is your room a travel buddy? And we're gonna go up this pathway to see if there's a clear viewpoint that we can catch more of the sun and the mountains. This gorgeous landscape that we see today was actually not always the same. It was actually the result of a long geographical history. The hills of Cuebrada de Hamueca arise from the outcrop of rocks at different times, which means it was the product of great forces inside the Earth's crust and the action of a long erosive process. The variety of colors that you see in these mountains actually come from an accumulation of sediments from more than 600 million years ago and humans only arrived to this region 10,000 years ago which is honestly everything is really hard and crazy to wrap my mind around everything is just so quiet and serene being reconnected to these mountains out in nature as well you can see no birds flying around, chirping. And the mountain is just the best time is when the sun hits onto, hits the lights onto this range. And you can really see the colors. Let me know if you see seven colors. So Yurun says he sees five. I see like a dark red, a light red white that's three grayish and then this orange so that's five but i don't know what the other two colors are apparently pink so maybe that but is that light red pink Not. Uh, that was an amazing experience to soak into the colors of the seven color mountains it's right behind me it's like right like so close to town Okay, we're going to start off our breakfast with a tortilla and this one has some ham in it and cheese. Hot off the grill. Mm, it's nice. The sun is out. I have some bomb ass food. I'm happy. La hoja de coco. Ah. Esa la hoja. So those are just the coca leaves. Ah. Uh -huh. And then this is the candy. You got one of each? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I'll get one of each. Una, una. 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 Una, We have secured the goods. <laughs> Of 
We're at El Maison and it is such a cool restaurant. It's literally only six tables here and all the small plates here, it's a set menu of three courses. All the small plates here are using ingredients of hukui and basically adapting the techniques, the cooking techniques of hukui in a more with a spin, with their own spin on it. Now that we have seen for Mamaka, we are going to start our road trip in Hujuy. Let's hit the road. This is our car for the trip. Yurun is driving as usual because <laughs> I don't have a driver's license. You know. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and I see after our tortilla, he has already started on something. We love Milka, but I never had this bubbly version of it. They say that the cocoa leaves don't have, for the candy at least, they don't have that much of an effect compared to the pure cocoa leaves that we also got. We're going to try that a little bit later when we reach the next town. So for now, I'm going to try what you can eat the West like. We have arrived to the UNESCO heritage site city of Muaka. And this is like actually one of the northern cities in one of the most northern west provinces, Jujuy, in Argentina. So I can't wait to explore it around. It's already really picturesque with different artworks around. Really nice stone path streets, as you can see. And I'm just gonna see, look around for some of the cool monuments that they may have in Muaka. We're in the center of town and you can hear around me how lively and bustling the center is because we're surrounded by these beautiful architectural churches. One here and this clock tower here. But then as well as the markets and vendors all around selling different pots, different artisanal goods, different toys and clothing as well. All right, well, I think I'm starting to feel the elevation, the altitude. Attitude. 
maybe maybe it's just placebo maybe not but we are at 3012 meters high so i'm going to bust out our cow leaves and then i just believe i think i hope i'm not making a fool of myself on camera i think you just take like a bunch like a handful not a handful but like a few few leaves what okay <laughs> So this is what it looks like, literally like leaves. But from a certain plant, and this is quite popular in mountainous regions in Latin America. So you have this in places like Colombia as well. And they make like ice cream flavor out of it, which is pretty cool. We have the candy flavor. I'm gonna just try, just like sprinkle it all around. I'm just gonna try this one. I think you chew it. You just put it in your mouth and you chew it. The candy definitely tastes better because this is just straight up herbs. I just pack it with my saliva, make it wet. And then I just leave it in the side of my cheek. And then apparently in half an hour, it kind of kicks in. We'll see. Y'all know I'm not an unfit person, but going from zero altitude in Buenos Aires to 3,000, over 3,000 meters in altitude. Even this little, <laughs> this little pathway has got my heart beating like, whew, I'm out of breath. Anyways, this is cool. This is the sculpture monument of the heroes of independence, which is what it is also called. And it overlooks the town. Let's go to Oh, so it turns out inside the monument, there is a really nice museum. A little small museum they can check out that includes a lot of different arts and potteries here. Our tickets for the other museum also allows access to this archaeological museum, which is a little smaller, just down the pathway. Ooh, really nice pieces. Colors 
I don't think so. I don't really care to see the 14 colors of this one. So they're just like topping each other each time. We made it! Oh my goodness, it is incredible to be standing out here and staring out at this range of mountains that has been formed over millions and millions of years ago and just seeing like, like the different arrowheads, like the shape of it just jagging through. Oh man, and the way that the sun is hitting it right now too. Wow. We are at 4,350 meters high. And it's crazy that we could just drive all the way up here. It's just, this is one of those places that is so hard to believe that it is real. Like standing in front of a painting. It's just unbelievably surreal the Serra Honakal is the name by which this mountain range is known as locally but to outdo the nearby seven colors mountains this range is now dubbed the 14 colored mountains and the colorful phenomenon of the 14 colored mountains was actually formed underwater some casual 600 million years ago when over a different time periods, various mineral sediments build up in layers which have now been exposed by erosion, as you can see. And then the geological formation actually runs along the Andes all the way from Salta, Argentina, which we'll be exploring in the next vlog, through the Bolivian Altiplano and onto Peru. So this landmark of Argentina feels a bit like you are wearing some heavily tinted rainbow glasses or just a little too much of applying Instagram filters in real life. And the contrast of the blue sky and the yellow grasses of the hills surrounding just really exaggerates the rainbow colors even further and just makes it so pop out. This indescribably beautiful spot is only found in this isolated corner of the world. So this gem is undoubtedly safe from mass tourism and development at the moment. Even when Yerun and I were exploring, there were only a few other peoples around and spread out in such a wide mass of land, you really do feel like you have all of this rare piece of nature to yourself. It is a phenomenal feeling being out here and you think that this being such a cool like musty place in Huhui that will be packed but look at this Ooh. there's like a few other people Ooh. that's it like it's really nice and like so peaceful to just have this place to yourself and stare out into that vastness <sighs>
had to get out because look, all these llamas, so cute. Finally, after been looking out for them the whole entire day, finally see the llamas. Look how white everything is here. So you may wonder, is this snow? But no, it's not snow. It's actually, this is all salt. So this is Salina Grande, which is the great salt plains of Argentina. Now I know Bolivia has the famous salt plains of South America, but what people don't know is out here in Jujuy, you got the Rainbow Mountains that Peru is famous for. You also got the salt plains here that Bolivia may be famous for, but you can have it all in this one province out here. How cool is it? And it's so freaking white. Look at the llama statue. <laughs> This is too cool. So here you're allowed to drive on the salt flats if you get a guide. Because that's the only way because they have to do it well for conservation. Like obviously you can't just drive anywhere along the salt flats and like throw it up. So there's a pathway and then your guide has is on a motorbike ahead of us and you just follow him and then eventually you'll be able to get out and then explore. But look how cool! Oh! The awe-inspiring salt flats called Salinas Grandes is at an average altitude of 11,320 feet above sea level. What is so out of the world for me is this dark line clearly separating the vast blue skies above and the silvery white fissure ground below us. These salt flats are so huge, it actually stretches over from Jujuy into the next province, Salta, and is said to be the remnants of an ancient spent river with shimmering salt flats reaching into the backgrounds of the Andes Mountains. Apparently you can taste this. Mmm, it is really salty. <laughs> It's like multiple Lay's ketchup chips, like potato chips, but like even more. <laughs> as tremendous as the Selena Grandes is, it's actually only the third largest in the world, casual, right? In terms of a salt flat, which is so mind blowing because this is a vast plain of land spanning more than 212 square kilometers already. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mother Nature never ceases to amaze me. You can see the shapes that are naturally formed in the salt flats, and that's due to how the water evaporates and the salt that is left behind shrinks and contrasts. This provokes cracks on the surface of the salt and the tension that builds up makes the cracks grow in length following this crystallization planes until they meet another crack which ends up creating this polygon shape and all these polygon shape connects together like a beehive from the surface. Adding to just the amazement of the Salinas Grandes are these natural salt pools that are just formed. Like, how cool! Honestly, it looks like I'm in the Arctic. 
if I didn't know otherwise because of how, just how white everything is, how pure everything is here. And then look at this, this pool. And the reflection in it is so crystal clear too. I have to be careful where I step. Look at that. You can see so like translucently in it. You do it. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Spreading my arms out. Oh. Feeling whimsical. Oh, whimsical. <laughs> she went to the high five. <laughs> <laughs> Today was in one word, wow, just wow. We went from flying into Jujuy in Argentina to get our car, road tripping across colorful mountains that look like a painting that comes to life, zigzagging on switchbacks to salt flats that resemble something from another planet's surface. After doing long distance with Yeroon for the past few months, I just couldn't be happier that this is the adventure that kicks off our reunion. We'll be exploring more of Argentina in the next vlog, driving into another great province. So don't miss out and subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a like and leave us a comment below. For now, we're driving off into the sunset. Love you lots, Logie Bears.